Hi there and welcome to another video. I'm glad you're here. So today I am sharing with you one of the easiest techniques to do with Distress Ink and Distress Oxide Ink. You can do this technique with any outline images you have and you can go for either soft looks or bold looks. I'm most excited today to be using the newest color that Tim Holtz has added to the Distress line. When a new color was announced, I was excited and hoping that it would be either a dark coral color or a yellow, and I was so excited to see that it was a coral color. So I'm going to, I'll start by first giving a closer look at the color and comparing it to others, and then we'll get into the technique and making cards. And stay tuned because I'll share a tip that allows you to get four cards out of one background. So let me introduce you to Crackling Campfire. This color is available now in all of the different Distress products, all the ones you see here. In my video today, I'll be focusing on the Distress Oxide ink and the Distress ink, but I wanted to show you what is available. So let's go through the different products and then I'll show you what the color looks like. So first up, we have the traditional Distress Ink. This is the ink we have all known and loved for many years. It reacts with water and does beautiful results. And there is the reinker available for that, which I do recommend for these inks. Then there is Oxide Ink, which has a bit of a pigment and dye property to it. And we'll be using that today. And there is the reinker. And then there is the Distress Paint. We have the Distress Spray Stain and Distress Oxide Spray. If you've never used the Oxide Sprays, they're super fun, and I'll link to a video here showing things you can do with that. Here we have the Distress Embossing Glaze. I've done a video on that too, I'll link to it. It's a beautiful embossing powder that is see-through but tinted the beautiful color of Crackling Campfire. And then finally, there's the enamel pen. If you're an enamel pen collector like me, you'll be excited to see that Distress Inks come in pens now. Okay, so let's just look quickly at the two most important products, the Distress Ink there on the top and the Distress Oxide on the bottom. My first reaction is this is a warm coral color. Many people have different ways of describing it, but I thought I would share what I see from it. So let's compare it to all the other colors that maybe some people have questions about how it compares. This is first the oxide inks. There's Crackling Campfire there in the bottom center. You can see it is a warm coral color. So I think it goes best with Abandoned Coral. I think that makes a great pair. You can also use it with Ripe Persimmon or one of the orange colors because it does have like a yellow tone to it, a little bit of warmth to that coral color. This is a beautiful color that I think would be great for a pop of color on maybe a card that has some soft pool to it or soft greens or even a yellow. Okay, next let's look at the color swatches for the traditional Distress Ink, the regular Distress Ink. Crackling Campfire is there in the bottom center. You can see once again, it is a warmer coral color. It's warmer than the barn door next to it. It goes nicely with the abandoned coral once again, but it also goes well with ripe persimmon and spiced marmalade. I hope this comparison helps you to decide if this is an ink color for you and see how beautiful it is. If you're interested in making your own ink swatches, I do have free downloads on my blog and I'll provide that in a link below. So you can make your own swatches for the ink, Distress Ink or the Oxide Inks. Okay, now it's time to get into our technique for today. This is a technique where you paint with water over a Distress Ink or Distress Oxide Ink background. It's super simple. And the best part of it is if you have a stamped image that requires a lot of coloring, this is a much faster and easier technique. For all of my card backgrounds today, I'll be using the Hero Arts Christmas Rose background stamp. This is beautiful and I really wanted to use it, but I was scared to color it all in. So today's technique is the perfect trick. I'm using my Misty stamping tool. So I take out the mat from the inside to use the thicker cling stamp. I have a piece of Nina Classic Crest 110 pound cardstock. Any white cardstock will work. I just recommend a heavy weight cardstock since we will be adding water. I don't recommend watercolor paper for this technique. I use my anti-static powder tool and then I'm double stamping with Versamark ink because I want a really good impression and I can't tell if I did because it is a clear ink. I am using a bigger piece of white cardstock so I can get as much of this stamp on my paper as possible so I can get multiple cards from it. 
I added Hero Arts white embossing powder and now I'm heat setting it. And I'll do this same process again for a few additional backgrounds so I can demonstrate different color combinations and techniques throughout the video. Let's first start with oxide ink because I really like oxide inks, especially in this new crackling campfire color. I will do distress ink later. So I have my heat embossed background there and I have two inking tools. On the left I have the Ranger mini ink blending tool. On the right I have a blending brush. I wanted to show you the difference between these and how I use them with my distress inks. So this is the oxide crackling campfire color. And I am starting with a very heavy amount of this color, so I'm using my ink blending tool. That's great for putting down a lot of color. Now I'm coming in with the blending brush, and I'm putting down a lighter amount of color so I can blend from dark to white on the other end. I wanted an ombre look. So I like to tap off the excess ink on my work surface so that when I come to the paper I have less ink and a light hand and can control how much color is going down. I find it easier to do a light blend like this where we blend out to white when using a blending brush instead of the ink blending tool. But you'll see me do other things throughout this video. I am trying to put down as much color as possible onto this paper, especially at the top there, because of the technique that we're doing. The more ink you have, the better the results. One of the things that I notice about this particular color of oxide ink is it fades out to a yellow. Look at that. When you apply it lightly, it's very warm. It has a nice yellow color to it. Absolutely beautiful. So I like how it goes coral to orange to yellow, all with one ink. Once I'm done applying the ink color, I do wipe the excess off with a dry cloth so that the white embossing pops out once again. You can see here if I put more ink on it, the white embossing gets covered and it gets kind of a yellow or orange tint to it. So if you just wipe it with a dry cloth, it'll be bright white again. Okay, now let's create the same background using the Crackling Campfire Distress Ink. The last one was oxide. This is the traditional distress ink. So I'm starting by using my ink blending tool. And you can see that you have to work a little bit more to get the color down. With the oxide ink that I used in the last example, it has a bit of a pigment property to it. That's an opaqueness that kind of sits on top of the paper, making it easier to blend. Now Distress Ink that I'm using here, the traditional, it is a dye, a type of dye ink. So it takes a little bit more work to work it into the paper and get a blend. Now don't get me wrong, traditional Distress Ink is much easier to blend than most dye inks that you'll get out there. But for the most, um, the, the easiest ink to blend, it's definitely oxide. Once again, I went very heavy handed on the end with the ink blending tool. And now I'm coming in with a lighter hand and kind of blending the color out to white using a blending brush. I do have a different blending brush for my oxide and for my dye inks. I don't want to transfer one ink to the other. So I do recommend having that. But you really don't need to have a brush for each color but you, do, you could just use the same one, you would just wanna clean it between. Okay, so there you can see that you are able to get a beautiful um, application of color using traditional Distress Ink too. This is a little more vibrant. It will tone down a little bit as it dries, but you can also see how it blends out to white with a really warm color. Let's do a quick comparison between the two. These are both Crackling Campfire. On the left is traditional Distress Ink. On the right is Oxide Ink. You can see how the oxide background is a little more creamy, a little more muted, a, a bit of a softer look. So it's really a personal pref preference, and both of these work with today's technique. Let's also do a background with multiple colors. The three colors I used here that worked really well together are Seedless Preserves, Picked Raspberry, and Crackling Campfire. I decided to use the oxide ink because it blends so easily. I'm using a blending brush because that's also good when you're going from one color to another because you can overlap with a lighter hand. So on this end, I'm applying a heavy amount of the Seedless Preserves. And then you can see how it's kind of softened over there on the left edge. You want the color to go farther than you think because you want your colors to overlap. Then I'm going to the other end with the Crackling Campfire. I did switch blending brushes. If you only have one blending brush, be sure to clean it before switching to the next color. 
Then I'm coming in with picked raspberry to the inside there. And I'll make sure that this overlaps with the seedless preserves and the crackling campfire that I've already put down. You can see how easy it was to get this beautiful background by using a blending brush and the oxide inks. After applying the center color, I do come back with the first two colors and apply a very light amount to help get that perfect blend. Okay, so now you can take a dry cloth and buff off the excess ink and that white will pop out and you'll have a beautiful result. You can see this took very little effort. If you have trouble with blending ink colors, I do recommend oxide inks. They are definitely the easiest to blend. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our technique for today. This is where we paint with water. It couldn't be easier. I'm starting with the background we made with oxide inks and the multiple colors. I have a water brush. If you don't have a water brush, you could use a regular brush and a cup of water. Watch as I paint in with just water one of the flowers on the oxide background. See how it instantly reacts with the ink in the background and makes the water look kind of purple? I then dab it with a dry cloth and it removes some of the color and leaves this white creamy look behind. That's the oxide effect that this oxide ink provides. When you apply water to a distress ink or oxide ink background, it reacts with the water. So we're just removing the color, what happens when it reacts with the water, and leaving a soft look inside of all of these images. Now I am putting quite a bit of water down. I'm kind of squeezing as I do this. So you'll see there's a puddle of water inside of our heat embossed outline. I usually do one or two images, sometimes three, and then dab them. You don't want your water sitting there too long because it might kind of spread out of the lines, but you can see that this is very easy to do. If you're someone who struggles with coloring, like I do, this is an option for you. I do like to repeat the process twice. So I put the water in an image, dab it off, and then come back to it and do it again in a bit. That just makes the contrast between the color inside of the out, uh, outline images and outside of the outline a little more prominent. I completed the entire background and here's the results that we get. And by the way, the soft white kind of color inside of the images does intensify with time. So there we have the beautiful results. And if you want to step that up a bit, you don't have to, you can color in the images with a shimmer pen. I just like that bit of sparkle and it kind of makes the background a little more interesting, but you could skip it if you wanted. And I did skip it on a few of my later examples. So I colored those in very quickly with my shimmer pen. You can see I'm not real careful with it. And now let's tilt it in the light so you can see the shimmer. It's kind of hard to capture on video, but it really makes that background just kind of come alive. Let's do another here. This is one of my oxide backgrounds where I only use the crackling campfire ink. And here you can see when you add the water, the water becomes orange as it touches the background and you just dab off the extra ink. Now I usually use a dry cloth in crafting instead of paper towels. I rarely use paper towels, but this is one of the cases where I feel like a paper towel is best because it absorbs up the water pretty quickly and you get clean results. There are two other ideas I wanted to mention. You could put the water down onto your oxide background or distress ink background and then lift off that excess color onto another piece of cardstock as you see me doing here. You could build up lots of this color and get a really interesting looking background. That's one way to use that excess ink instead of absorbing it into a paper towel that goes to waste. Another thing that you can do is take your water brush to your inked background and then that water there gets a little bit of color to it. You can take your water brush then to a white cardstock outline background and paint with that bit of color. I do like to heat set it when it's done. It makes the white pop out more. And then I can add the shimmer if I decide to do so. So here is a closer look at the final results of this one just created with the crackling campfire, water, and then the shimmer added on top. Now that we've done a few examples of the water painting on a Distress Oxide background, let's do the traditional Distress Ink background. When you add water to this and then dab it off, you don't get that white look right away. You get that with the oxide. That's that oxidation <laughs> effect that you get with that. But this will soften in those areas with time. You can see how my first two that I did are already starting to soften. 
So I'll continue to do this and here is a look at the completed. Inside of the flowers has more of a yellow tone to it, a little bit lighter. It doesn't have that white creamy effect that you get with Oxide. It's just a different look. This works with all the different colors of Distress Ink and Distress Oxide Ink. And I've not done another video on this technique, which I'll link to at the top right here if you want to check it out. So here's a comparison. On the left, we have the Oxide Ink background, and on the right, we have the Distress Ink background. Okay, it's now time to make some cards. And I have lots of tips for you for stretching your supplies, both your dyes, stamps, and your backgrounds that you created. So here's my background trimmed down. It's about five and a half by five and a half. And I'm going to cut it in half. So I have two pieces. This was inspired by my friend Kathy Zilski. Okay, she is a rock star. And if you don't follow her on YouTube, I recommend you do so. I will link to her channel here and below. Here's a little peek up in the top left of her video. She used this same background and cut her background down into three strips to make three cards. So that's what inspired me to cut up my backgrounds to do multiple cards today. And I thought I would go even farther and make the two pieces from one background turn into four pieces from one background. By doing an iron off embossing technique, you do not need to do this process if you don't want to. It's just a way to stretch your background to make more cards. For this, you need an iron, just a regular iron. I have one just for crafting. It's actually the only iron we own because we don't iron clothes. And I have it set to the highest without the steam. I have it on a cloth here. You can use your ironing board. And over it, I'm putting another piece of nice white cardstock. This is Nina Classic Crest Solar White. So I'm laying that right over our heat embossed inked background. I now will apply the iron. And you wanna make sure you don't allow your papers to shift underneath. You also want to make sure you cover up your heat embossed background completely with the cardstock you put on top so you don't get embossing powder on your iron. So now I can remove the cardstock. It's hard to see, but the embossing powder transferred to this cardstock piece, and we'll come back to it in a moment. And this piece is nice and smooth. It gives a really cool result in real life. It's hard to see in the video. But now I have a smooth background and extra piece to create another card. Okay, so now let's do it with another piece. I didn't do this to all of them, but just a couple so I could get extra cards. Normally when I do in an iron off technique like this, I use clear embossing powder. I feel like it gives better results, but I happen to use white today and it worked just fine. So let's take the white cardstock that we transferred that embossing powder onto. It's hard to see it, but when you apply ink over it, any ink you want, I'm using oxide ink, the image pops out and you get this kind of ghost-like look. It's a great way to step up your beautiful backgrounds to create two cards out of one, or in this case, I created four. Once I've applied the inks, you can use a cloth to buff off the extra. I thought I would make this sparkly because my card designs are going to be very simple. So I did end up spraying this with Sukuneko Shimmer Spritz. Any kind of shimmer spray would work. I sprayed it from up high so that I would get a fine mist over my background so it would have a bit of sparkle to it, but you could skip this if you wanted to. Little things like adding shimmer spritz or a shimmer pen takes very little time but makes a big difference on the final card. So now we have a bunch of background pieces and let's turn some of them into cards. I'm saving some of them for later. And I have some tips for you on really making the most of a simple card design. For this card and a few others, I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Basic Banner Die Set. This is one of those die sets that can be used in many different ways. The small banner die could even be used for sentiment strips. I used the largest die to create this banner from one of our inked backgrounds. This is one of the iron off backgrounds. I die cut two additional white banners that I glued to the back to give it some dimension. That helps it to stand out on the simple design. I thought by doing the banner shape instead of just a wide border going down my card, it made a little more interesting. And I will add this to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. For the sentiment, I use the new Sunny Studios Slimline Scallop Frame die set. This has the two large slimline frames that are perfect for slimline cards that are tall and narrow. But I'm going to show you a creative way to use those today. I also use the hello and the thank you in today's cards, but the set also includes the words congrats and greetings. I die cut the hello three times from black cardstock, and I'm using liquid adhesive to glue the three die cuts together. 
This gives you a stacked dimensional die cut, which I feel is really important when you're layering many elements, as I'll be doing today. I've got a busy background and I'm also going to add a white leaf die cut behind it. So by stacking them, it allows it to kind of stand out more, which I'll demonstrate. For the little leaf die cuts, I'm using my favorite things, Grand Greenery dies. I've used this in videos before. I die cut multiple from white cardstock. I only stacked two of them this time. And I'm arranging them behind the Hello die cut towards the bottom of our banner. I'm using Gina K Connect liquid adhesive for this. Using a liquid adhesive is very helpful because you can kind of wiggle your die cuts until they're in the position you want. And then you can press it down and it'll stay put. The glue does dry clear, so if any of it is showing, you won't see it in the end. I added this to my white note card, and you can see how adding the layers allows each of the elements to stand out on its own. I finished the card off by adding some Studio Katia Ripe Persimmon Pearls. I found this color perfectly matches the Crackling Campfire Distress Ink color, so it pulls everything together nicely. I like the dimension and shine of adding pearls and gems, but you could instead die cut little circles from some cardstock covered with, covered with crackling campfire and make little embellishments from that. So here's a look at the completed card. All the dimension really makes a big difference on this card. We have a busy background piece with elements layered on it. So the dimension kind of makes each piece stand out on its own. This background is the one that was the iron off piece where we added the ink on top and then sprayed it. You can see the sparkle there. Now you'll notice that I did add another leaf over to the left and it hangs off our card. So it's a little bit too wide now to fit in a regular envelope. So all I do is cut a little bit off the other side and now it'll fit in the envelope nicely. I like having elements hang off the card. I think it's fun and, and unexpected and makes the card extra special. Let's do another with a similar design, but I have another tip for you. When you have little leaves like this or little flowers that you want to cluster behind a die cut, this is something that I find to be helpful. I take the individual die cuts and I have them meet together in the center. So I'm putting glue on the back of each of these and notice that the end of each of these flowers or these leaves are meeting together. This kind of creates a focal point that when you add your sentiment on top, it draws your eye there. Now I'll put adhesive on the back of the hello and I'll cover up with that L there, that center point. Now it looks like one die cut behind it with the hello at the center. I'm adding, adding Trinity stamps, something new pearls. These are fun because there's giant pearls in it and super tiny pearls. So you have a good variety of sizes. Once again, I glued it onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card, but this time I have my banner down the center just for a different design. You can see the soft look on this background. This was Distress Oxide, where I just added the water painting. I didn't do any of the shimmer pen. You have a more creamy, soft, muted look when you leave it as is. Okay, my next examples use the scallop frame from that Sunny Studios Slimline die set. Remember, that's a really long die, but I was able to use it for traditional card size. So whenever you see these slimline dies that are really popular right now, remember you can use those on your smaller cards. So I'm just gluing this frame down the center of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding note card and trimming the excess off. So what I end up with is two scallop borders that will go around this inked piece. Now I'm adding extra white cardstock layers behind my inked piece. So I did two extra layers back there, three. This is just scrap white cardstock. On the other side of it is stamping that I messed up. So instead of throwing it away, I use it to add dimension. You could also use craft foam, but I found that this was a little more resourceful because the paper would have gone to waste. Now I'm just gluing that right down the center and you can see the scallop borders that we have on each side now. For a sentiment, I kept this very simple. I used the ink to paper, You Brighten My Life die. Since this uh, sentiment is pretty elaborate, it has a great design to it alone, I decided not to add anything else to the card and just let the background and the sentiment shine. So this was the background that we did with the multiple colors of Distress Oxide ink. We did the water painting and then added the shimmer pen into the flowers. So I did do the iron off, so it has a nice smooth look and no shine to the white outline. It looks really magical in real life. 
and you can see those scallop borders in white next to the piece which adds a bit of interest and that die remember was meant for a slimline card but it worked great for this okay this is one of the distress ink backgrounds that i use for this card and i have a tip about adding sentiment strips for this i'm using the altenew sentiment strips stamp set which you've seen me use multiple times there are many sentiments in here that go together nicely if you want multiple sentiments on a card so I stamped three of them on white cardstock strips. Instead of gluing them flat onto the card, I'm adding dimension behind them. Let me show you, I'm gonna hold this up. The You've Got This has dimension behind it. The others have nothing behind it. You can see how the You've Got This stands out more against the busy background. I used to use foam tape behind my sentiment strips, but decided not to do that anymore because I found they didn't hold up well in the mail. Instead, I used scraps once again of white cardstock, and I cut them to be a little bit more narrow than the sentiment strip itself, and I glued two or three on the back using liquid adhesive and then trim off the excess. This allows my uh, sentiments to stand up and they have lots of strength behind them so they'll go through the mail nicely. I then put liquid adhesive on the back so I can wiggle them around until I have it straight with the help of a T-ruler and centered on my card. So adding those additional strips behind it doesn't take long, but it makes a big difference, especially on a simple design like this. Once again, I'm using the uh, Trinity Stamps Something New Pearls. You can see that giant one there and the tiny one next to it. And I'm tucking some of these to make it look like they're peeking out from behind the sentiment strips. That's one of the other advantages of making the strips behind it a little bit smaller. So there's room to tuck some embellishments under it. So here's a look at the completed card. You can see I again used that slim line frame die, but this time I kept the bottom portion on it. So you can see the scallop on three sides. I trimmed down my background and added it to the card. I have my sentiments and some pearls and that's it. There is some shimmer to that distress ink background because I added the shimmer pen over the water painting that we did. Here's another where I use the bottom of that slimline scallop frame just to create the three sides of scallop. I just think that's a really neat way to create a simple card design. And I use the center die from that set that does faux stitching to cut out the centerpiece. This is one of the oxide backgrounds that we painted with water and then added the shimmer. This time I used one large leaf die cut and then the thank you on top of it in black and added the white pearls. Now the best part of all of this is I still have other backgrounds ready to go. So I could either use them for other techniques, save them for later, or make some cards with Lila. I'm hoping that the tips and techniques I shared in this video were helpful to you. If you're interested in getting a closer look at any of these, you can head to my blog. And all the supplies that I use are linked below there and in my YouTube description. I also have a couple other videos here in the center, one sharing a very similar technique, but in different colors, so you can see how different colors react with water painting. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you again very soon.